it's September and I'm walking around in the woods in Massachusetts. Let's go see what fungi we can find. Oh, this is gorgeous. There's a huge flush of turkey tail all over this log. So turkey tail, you can always tell it's a turkey tail because it'll have little white pores underneath. If it's smooth and orange, it's sterium. But Trimedes versicolor, which is what this is, can have a lot of different colorations. So it can be kind of blue, kind of brown, orange, all sort of all over the map. Sometimes it's even green when there's like algae growing on it. That's pretty. Saw some green wood on the forest floor, and you know what that means. Chlorosiboria, the green elf cups. So there's some little tiny fruiting bodies there. They're so cute. But they stain the wood green with their mycelium because they contain a compound called xylidin. That's so neat. Oh, this is so cool. This is a microheterotrophic plant that's related to the ghost pipe. It's a uh, monotropa hypopietus, and it's just gorgeous and red and yellow. Wow, look at it. It's popping up all over the forest floor. There's a version in the spring that is more yellow, and then this type that comes up in the fall is a lot more red. Ooh, that is so pretty. Look at those. So it's just like a flower that comes up from sort of a rhizome down on the ground. And that rhizome is connected to all the trees in the area, accessing the carbon from the mycorrhizal network. And that's what these live on, because they don't do photosynthesis. They just produce these alien looking flowers every year and spread their seeds. If you're ever curious if a mushroom is a rustler or brittle gill, here's how you can tell. I found this cool little rustler or brittle gill, and I don't know if it's edible or not, but it smells interesting. So I'm gonna do a quick little nibble and spit test to see if it's spicy. Tastes mild. Tastes mild and not particularly spicy or acrid. So I bet this one would be edible if I cooked it up in a pan. Oh, this is mega cool. Here's a scleroderma or earth ball with a parasitic bolete. So this is considered a toxic mushroom, but it grows a little bolete that's that's edible. And these are both in Boletaceae, so it's an example of sort of like the same family in parasitism. This is mycorrhizal, this is parasitic. It's really cool to see them growing together because this is being colonized by this mushroom. So I'm gonna pick them together and see if I can get a good picture of them. Whoa. That is majorly awesome. Look at that. <laughs> That's so wild. Earth ball getting parasitized by this parasitic bolete. Here's a cross section of that earth ball and that really cool parasitic bolete. It glows bright orange under UV. That's super cool. Wow. Ooh, that's cool. I'm gonna rot mycelium. Earth ball, scleroderma. Ooh, it's all white inside, so this would still be good to eat. This looks pretty good. I might go ahead and try eating this one. So here's an earth ball in a couple different stages. We got one that's white and immature, and in theory, this is good to eat. Once they turn black purple like this, they are toxic and make you quite sick. And there's some that get parasitized by a bolete that you can eat. But if this were black inside, it would make you sick. But if it were white inside, maybe you could eat it. So there's the rundown of scleroderma or earth balls. Green elf cups, chlorosiboria. Beautiful little ornate stocked elite. That, that's so pretty. Very cool. Whoa, that's a weird looking bolete. Not totally sure what that is. Might be a pallid bolete or possibly a hemiluxinum. Maybe just an ashtray bolete. I'll have to ID it and find out. It looks pretty different from this other bolete that I found very close nearby. So this is a ornate stocked bolete and 
this is something else. Ooh, that's a cool looking boat in it. What's going on here, friend? Ooh. Wow, it's so yellow. Look at that. I'm pretty sure this is a Hemilux item or ashtray bolete. But I'll have to check my ID books to make sure. Look at this sort of wrinkled brown cap. And not a ton of reticulation, but little granules there on the stem. Very bright golden pores. So. Whew, this stinks. I think this is the ashtray bully because it smells like smoky and weird and funky. Do not want to eat this one. Ooh, that's an interesting looking bully. I'm not sure what that is. That's pretty cool. Beautiful kind of reddish cap. Could be xanthaconium. I'll have to check my books. Ooh, what are these bullets? I saw them down in the grass. Okay, that's interesting. Kind of pale. I wonder if it'll stain a little bit blue for me. It's very velvety and suede like. Super pretty. Breaking off real easy. Something has been munching on these. I think I'll take, I think I'll take these home to try to identify them. Oh, I do see some staining. This little bit of blue staining on them makes me think that this is probably a pallid bully. So that's cool. Very pretty. Interesting to see that. Pretty sure these are edible. The East Coast is such amazing bully diversity. I found all of these just on a short hike. I've never seen any of these species on the West Coast. There's just so many out here and the diversity is wild so cool whoa look at those gills that's cool this is not a mushroom but it is a gall pretty cool looking i wonder what it looks like inside Ooh, neat inside it has this really cool pattern structure that's wild looking what an interesting gall this black stuff here is chaga. It's not actually a mushroom, it's a sterile conch or sclerotia produced by the fungi. It can grow for up to like 80 years throughout the life of this tree. And then when the birch tree dies, the chaga will mobilize its resources and allow a mushroom to form on the dead and dying tree. But this itself does not produce spores, so it's a sterile conch and chaga is not a mushroom. Ooh, what do we got here? I haven't seen this in a few years. This is Cortinarius ioides. Beautiful, kind of dappled top on this purple mushroom. Ooh, wow. That's pretty. I love these. Usually there's tons of them out, but it's been a pretty dry year, so this is the first one I've seen. Very cool, Cortinarius. It's a web cap, so you can see little bits of the brown spore deposit there on the stem. But what a cool and pretty mushroom. Love that dappled cap. Cortinarius oides. Ooh, that is one wet hole. Look at that. Here's some big old chunks of Berkeley's polypore that I harvested earlier in the year, and they've all kind of dried out and aged, but they're looking just fine. Out here spreading their spores, doing their thing. Ooh, that's a cool polypore. Here's a Rishi shelf that I found earlier in the season. I picked the big one down below, but this little one I left it's still here doing its thing. So pretty. Checking this tree trunk because I can see remnants of chicken of the woods all over the place here, but no fresh chickens. So I'll just have to come back later after more rain. So I was walking along the trail when something bright and orange caught my eye. I think we have some chicken of the woods kind of buried in here, so I don't know how easy it's going to be to access or how good it's going to be. Some of them might be a little old and ratty, but let's go in, take a look. There might be some nice parts, especially along the edges there. All right, there we have it. Chicken of the woods, Latipris sulfurious. Nice big cluster here. There's some fresh growth on the edge, all that water. And underneath it has these beautiful little yellow pores. So it is what's called a polypore mushroom and it's grown here on dead wood. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to harvest little bits along the edge that are a little fresher, a little more tender. The stuff inside is gonna be too hard and woody and just isn't gonna taste good 
or be good for you if you try to eat it. But the stuff on the edge that's fresh might still be pretty nice. Make some little chicken nuggets out of them or something. One of my favorite mushrooms to find just because it's so visually impressive and it's really easy to identify because there's nothing that really looks like it that is a polypore and has those yellow pores underneath. So cool, beautiful. Chicken of the woods, Latiparus sulfurius. What is that? Whoa. Here's some honey mushroom rhizomorphs. So these are the things that crawl up into trees and kill them by girdling and cutting off the flow of the xylem and the nutrients moving up and down water. So honey mushrooms are tree killers for sure. And these rhizomorphs are how they do it. Here's a very cool parasitic plant known as a beech drop or epiphagus. They make really pretty, almost orchid-like flowers. What a neat plant. Cool to see at the bottom of this big beech tree. Believe it or not, these weird little black dots are mushrooms. They're ascomycetes that live inside of the tree when it's alive, and then when the tree dies, they come out and form these little fruiting bodies. Kind of like little tree pimples. But these are in Xylariaceae, and that's sort of their entire life strategy and they sit here for years on end slowly dispersing their spores out of little flasks inside these black nubs. There's some lichen there too, that's pretty cool looking. Okay?